Hello, welcome to today's class. Today we will be talking about the concept of cumulative causation theory given by Breda. Now Breda basically gave this concept in his book Economic Theory and Underdevelopment Regions where he talked about that some areas naturally have a good start. Okay, so let's say there are two areas. Area A, Region A and Region B. B. Now, region A is naturally bestowed with huge amount of coal. Okay, they have uh, this region has lot of minerals. Okay, the labor is cheap. Okay, and also this region has lot of uh, good connectivity or transport network. Okay. On the other hand, you have region B, which has, uh, which, which is basically agricultural region. There is no proper electricity, no proper transport facilities, and so on. Okay. Now, what would happen? This region A is naturally a good region or is naturally bestowed with some positive elements as compared to region B. So according to Vidal, this region would have advantage over region B. Okay. So he basically said that there are certain regions in the world which are naturally, uh, naturally more flourishing as compared to other regions. As a result, these regions have a good, good start point. Okay, so based on this, he classified or gave two basic terms. The first one was the backwash effect, and the next is the spread effect. So let's start one by one. So first is the backwash effect. Now, what, how do we understand the term backwash? If you have been to any ocean beach, okay, what would happen in the evenings if there is a high tide, okay, this water would slowly and gradually enter into the beach and as the high tide retreats, the water would go off, okay. So this region of the beach would be considered as a region of backwash. So what happens at a backwash effect is, the region B that was not good as we discussed in the previous example, okay, this region which is already poor in resources, okay, since it is poor in resources, the people here would like to move out to the region A where they can get better job opportunities, okay. So from this, this region, there would be outflow of labor, okay, there would be outflow of whatever capital resources are there, okay, if there are any firms or small industries in this region, will they be able to compete with the industries in the region A that we discussed, so it would be extremely difficult for the industries here to compete with the industries at region A. As a result, these firms will either face closure or would uh, close down or would move to a bigger settlement or region A, what we discussed in the previous example. Okay. So as a result, this region which is already uh, which is already not that good or is not naturally flourished with things would have movement of people, movement of capital and movement of industries out of this region and this would create a backwash effect for this region. Now what is the next region that we, the next effect that we talk of, uh, that we are talked about. The next effect that he gave was the spread effect. And what is this spread effect? Now we'll move on to the region A that we discussed previously. Okay. This region, since it 
has it is naturally flourishing region it has huge amount of minerals and coal so a lot of industries can come up so it has advantage for industries to come up okay next there will be inflow of labor inflow of capital okay as a result of huge inflow of capital and labor there would be huge investments in this region because there are adequate investment in this region what would happen is the development would get strengthened okay so what would happen is this region which was initially this okay would slowly and gradually increase okay and this would further increase okay so this is what is the spread effect of which was given by breda so what is happening is this region a is slowly and gradually increasing as compared to region b that we discussed that was slowly and gradually collapsing now further okay so you have region b so since there is outflow of people there is no one who is interested to work in that region would have a backwash effect and it could squeeze down so in the spread effect he talked about uh, he talked about inducing development okay why in backwash effect there was movement of people out of the region okay so once he mentioned these explained these two terms backwash effect and spread effect he could ex easily explain his model that was the cumulative causation now let's understand what is the cumulative causation theory so based on this spread effect and the backwash effect he talked about cumulative causation and the cumulative causation he said this is the region a okay this region is uh, i'll say region resources okay so there will be inflow of labor and capital that would invite more investment in the region since the investment would increase job opportunities would increase as a result economic activities in the region would increase these economic activities will further increase the capital and inflow in the region and this would further increase the region or increase uh, promote more development i should say promote more development in the region okay so what is happening is the region a which was initially had a good good um, start point is getting more and more bigger okay and this region is basically having a good start point or we can say it is affected by the spread effect okay the next is so this was the cumulative causation as it would work in a uh, flourishing region okay now what would be the cumulative causation effect in a underdeveloped region so in a underdeveloped region what would happen is the region is already poor okay there are no adequate resources in the region so i have region which is already poor so there is no adequate resources since there is no resource uh, there is no infrastructure in the region since there is no infrastructure in the region there would be no investment as people are not investing in the region there would not be any job opportunities or job generation i should say since there is no new job generation in the region there would be no economic activities and since there are no economic activities the region will further go poorer and poorer 
Okay, so that is what is explained by Mirdal under the cumulative causation theory. So he basically wants to say the region which is naturally bestowed with resources grows at a larger pace. Okay, there are mar market inequalities that always exist and that help the developed regions to grow further. And those regions which are not developed, they further go down in the uh, sequence or I should say they further go poorer and poorer. So he basically talked, he opposed the growth pole concept first of all we can see here. He opposed, Mridal opposed the growth pole concept. His theory focused on two things that is the backwash effect and the spread effect. And based on that, he gave the concept of cumulative causation that the region which is rich gets more and more rich and the region which is poor gets more and more poor over time. But he said, the region which is poor tends to go poor at a much faster pace in an underdeveloped nation okay, or a developing nation as compared to developed nation. Okay, so his main aim was to focus on the underdeveloped economies and he said those regions which are underdeveloped, in that region if there is a poor section or a section which is not flourishing, it would go further down as compared to the other regions. So, uh, why what happens in a developed nation, what happens in a developed nation is the region which is rich tends to go further rich at a faster pace. So, developed nations are a good start point for the regions which are, uh, for the regions that are prosperous in nature. So, prosperous regions have a much better advantage in developed nation as compared to a developing nation. His theory was much more realistic and uh, simplistic as compared to the other theories in regional development. So this was the basic concept of Mridal's cumulative causation theory. We will be talking about more theories on trickle-down effect and polarization in further classes.